Ladies and gentlemen, at any moment during the next 30 minutes, someone might receive $1,000 cash. At any moment during the next 30 minutes. Really? You bet your life. Here's the show that has the $1,000 bell that rings at the mention of the mystery word. And here's the star of You Bet Your Life, one of the greatest stars of all time, Jupiter. A man known to millions everywhere. How about yous? Someone who's worked up from the bottom of the ladder. Oh, Margaret Truman. The one and only... Thank you, thank you. This is Groucho Marx. Well, here I am, stepping in over my head again. Folks, this is just as new to me as it is to you. I've never done one of these shows before, but we've got several couples up here on the stage, a lot of people in the seats out front, and the doors are locked, so I've got to go through with it. <laughs> Besides, somebody might win $1,000 cash at any moment. All I know is it can't be me. Jack Slatterly, who's the first couple? Well, Miss Merle McHugh and Mr. Robert Brooks meet the man with all the money, Groucho Marx. <laughs> Welcome to You Bet Your Life Folks, we advertise for a lot of people to come to the show today Who are interested in getting married But who haven't found the right mate yet And just before we went on the air These two volunteers were chosen from the audience Have you two met each other before? No uh, no. Miss McHugh, uh, Miss McHugh, shake hands with Mr. Brooks How do you do? I now pronounce you man and wife <laughs> Hey, wait a minute, Groucho You're going a little bit too fast well, I guess I was a little hasty here. Uh. So you two want to get married, eh? That's right. Mr. Yeah. Brooks, may I ask one question? Yes, Mr. Why? <laughs> and Miss, night, Miss you know. McHugh, Miss McHugh, why do you want to get married? Well, I Are you I... being evicted? No. <laughs> I think I'm about the right age. And oh, I... the right age. You like certainly are. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, before you, we give you a chance to make a thousand bucks, let's see how well matched you are. Who knows? Maybe Cubit Marks will light a fire here. Could be. Uh, would you mind telling me how old you are, Miss McHugh? I'm 22. McHugh? 22, huh? And uh, what is your occupation? I'm a waitress. A waitress? Yes. We should wait on me occasionally. Huh? <laughs> and uh, how old are you? 24, Miss Marks. 24? And what is your occupation? I sell clothes. <laughs> well, uh, wholesale? No, no. no. <laughs> I see. Well, um... How tall is your ideal dream man, Miss uh, McHugh? Well, uh, usually over six feet. Oh, I, are you over six feet? Yes, I am. Six one. Six one, huh? <laughs> well, these two may get along all right, eh? Uh, Merle, uh, do you prefer the uh, polite type or the rugged caveman type? Well, I don't like to be dragged around by the hair, but I like somebody that's kind of polite on the surface and maybe strong once in a while. You know. I see. <laughs> What about you? How do you feel about that, huh? Well, I think she's got me right on the head there. You see, I, I, I'm rugged, but I'm, I'm still... Uh, uh, well, I mean, here. you like to drag girls around by the hair, huh? I can huh? try it sometime. Well, I guess it could be fun at that, huh? Now, tell me, do you prefer blondes or brunettes? Oh, honestly, brunettes. You, you like brunettes mm. best, huh? Sure. Is this a sudden decision, or is this something that you... Uh... No, no, it's been going on for quite some time. It has, huh? And how do you feel about it, Merle? Well, I usually like redheads, but I can make exceptions. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this guy, this girl knows how to wait, I'll tell you that. <laughs> uh, Bob, uh, what do you think? Do you think that a fella should kiss a girl on the first date? Uh, yes, definitely. <laughs> well, uh, you're pretty impartial with that decision, eh? Yes, yes, very much so. But why, why out, do you feel that way, eh? Well, if you like the girl and you want to go out and have a good time and you, you, you had a terrific evening... And you come back and you both stand on the doorstep. It's silly to just say goodnight and walk away, isn't it? I mean, you know, you know, I'd like to get all about you in a very few days, and that wouldn't be any good. Well, you might kiss her and she might forget about you even quicker, huh? No, but not me. Not the way you kiss. <laughs> well, I don't know. I've never kissed you, so I don't know. <laughs> However, I'm not doing anything tonight. Huh? <laughs> Now, uh, Merle, how do you feel about this? Do you think that a fella should kiss a girl the first time he takes her out? Or well, do you feel that's wa- like walking into a candy store and swiping the stuff before you paid for it, huh? I don't, I don't know. If it's kind of surprise, spontaneous, I guess I wouldn't mind. I mean, you mean if it's combustion? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, that makes it kind of uncomfortable. Oh, you just want him to grab you and, and kiss you, huh? Mm-hmm. 
If I liked him well enough to go out with him, I guess I wouldn't mind too much if he kissed me I see. Well, I'm not doing anything tonight either. (laughs) Now, tell me, uh, uh, Bob, what do you think is the ideal size family? I mean, uh, this this is a natural sequence from kissing. I mean, I'd just like to find out (laughs) how you feel. What is is your conception of the... Three? Yeah, two boys and a girl. Two boys and a girl, Uh huh? And uh, how do you feel about it, then? That's funny. I, I like two boys and a girl, too. <laughs> I mean, uh, I've oh, always thought that was nice. <laughs> he's hooked already. I can see. <laughs> he hasn't disagreed with anything he said yet, huh? Well, you each want two boys and a girl, huh? Mm-hmm. That's six children you want, huh? <laughs> you make a pretty good partnership. Do you have any idea what you're going to do right now? No. You? No. Do you have any idea? Well, no. you're going to work together. Oh. In a nice way, of course. You have something in common now. You two and each of the couples here on stage have just been credited with ten, twenty dollars on our books. I'll ask each couple three questions. You bet me you can answer those questions using any part of the twenty dollars you want. The idea is to build your twenty bucks into as much money as possible, because the couple winning the most money not only gets to keep it, but also gets a chance at a thousand dollar question at the end of the show. Is that clear? Mm-hmm. Now, how'd you like a chance at the thousand dollars right this minute? Oh, Good fine. idea. Let's go. Well, if you happen to mention a certain secret word, any time you're up here talking, a bell will ring like this. That doesn't mean you have to jump out of the window. That means you get a chance at the $1,000 question. Now, when the bell rings, I'll ask you the $1,000 question immediately, and if you answer it right, you collect the 1000 This is Jack Slattery off stage, where no one in the studio can hear me. If anybody mentions the word air, A-I-R, during the rest of the show, he gets a chance at the $1,000 question. Remember, the secret word is air, A-I-R. And now, back to Groucho. If you were married, you would probably get 900 and she'd get 100, huh? Now, what would you do with the 500 that you'd oh, win? Oh, I'd like to buy some clothes and maybe a couple of books and records. Mostly clothes. Though. Mostly clothes, huh? And you? Oh, I'm the saving kind. I'll save that for the honeymoon. Well, well, look pretty on the honeymoon. Well, look, uh, he sells the clothes. Are you going to buy the clothes from him? <laughs> 20% discount. I see. Well, I wonder which of our couples is going to win the most money. Just to be fair, so the other couples will know how much this couple ends up with, I'd like you other contestants to uh, get off the stage. Beat it! Scram! Ward, lock them in a the dressing room. Stuff a vice president in their ears. We'll bring them back one at a time. Okay, they're gone now. Now you, you two get three questions. First one is on food. How much of your $20 do you want to bet you can answer it? Ten. If you bet 10, no, you, you make, make 10. Five. Now, wait a so minute. Decide between you. No, no, I'm intending. Now, let's bet five and we can serve it. Just to start out, see You're going to find out now who's the boss here. All right. We'll bet five. You're going to bet five? (laughs) It's that way in every family. I don't know why you're all so surprised out there. Now, let me understand this. You're betting five dollars between you. Is that right? That's right. Now, you uh, you can take all the time you want on this this answer. I'll give you five seconds. (laughs) Now, here's the question. In the entire world, what food is most extensively used? Wheat, corn, rice, or pablum? You get one answer between you now, so talk it over. Wheat? What do you think? I imagine because that beats a lot of our things, too. Yeah, wheat. Let's, we'll say wheat. We say wheat. I'm sorry, the, the answer is rice. If you p- folks had been married, you'd have been aware of that, huh? Now, how much have they got, Jack? They got $15, Groucho. They've got $15. Oh, we well, now, now's your second question. It's on etiquette. Quest, this question pays two to one. How much do you want to bet of your $15? Remember, you've got to make more than the other couples in order to get a chance at the $1,000 question. No, no, let's go five this time. <laughs> oh, brother, is he going to oh, save their money when they get married? The eh? no, but, we, no, we've we've got to get it back and double it this time. Oh, all right, make it, make it, make it ten. Make it ten. <laughs> <laughs> well, here it is. Is it proper to break a piece of bread or roll in the soup? Uh, no, uh, I mean, is it proper to break a piece of bread or roll in the soup? <laughs> Is it proper or improper? I don't think so. I think it's well, improper. Uh, you think it's no, improper? No, 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 I wouldn't say it that way. I would say that it wasn't improper, but it just isn't done. Well, I mean, but you've got to answer one way or the other. I mean, <laughs> you can't be a diplomat here. You've got to come right out with some kind of a specific answer. I'll say no. No, it's not proper. It's not proper. You're absolutely right. It's very improper, especially to roll in the soup. Now, how much, uh, how much have they got, Jack? They will have $35, Groucho. $35. Now, for your last chance, it's a general question. How much of your $35 do you want to bet? It pays three to one this time. So if you win, you've got $105. What's the question about? Ah, <laughs> uh, that's the thing we don't reveal, eh? Oh. 
We'll make this question even more interesting. If you get it right, we'll send an Admiral radio phonograph combination to anybody you name in each of your hometowns. Well, if you get it right, uh, who shall we send it to and where? Uh, I'd like we'll to send it to my mother in New York. Your mother is in New York, yes. huh? She hasn't got a radio phonograph? No, she hasn't, no. as a matter of fact. I see. She, has she got a husband? Uh, yes. <laughs> Last I heard from her, she did. Oh, she did, huh? Is that in recent oh, no, years, she huh? Still does. <laughs> and where would you like your radio phonograph combination sent? The Admiral radio phonograph. Well, I suppose my mother also in Wisconsin. Oh. Nobody's mother apparently has a phonograph, huh? <laughs> in Wisconsin, whereabouts in Wisconsin? Milwaukee. Milwaukee, huh? Well, there's a lot of beer there. I didn't know they were short on radios, though. <laughs> I guess if you got enough beer, you don't need a radio, huh? <laughs> okay, now how much are you betting? I'll make it twenty bucks and, and clear it off. All right, let's see. You're betting $20, huh? Yeah. Okay, if you get it right, they get the radios. If you get it wrong, you'll probably get time bombs in the next mail. Now, here's the question. Does mohair come from a camel, a sheep, a goat, or a toupee? A camel, a sheep, a goat, or a toupee? Yeah. Now, talk it over. Now, let's think about it. It couldn't be a camel, could it? Because that camel's hair. <laughs> well, let's say, let's say the goat. Hmm? Do, you want, do you think so? Yeah, my... Must be a goat. A goat is absolutely right, Jack. Oh. What did they find out? Let me congratulate you, huh? Oh, wait, I didn't see it all night. Let's introduce. up with $95. $95. Well, congratulations oh, to you and I. Uh, you you just sit down over there. We'll uh, see you all later, huh? I wonder if any of the other couples will make more than $95. If they don't, you two get a chance at the $1,000 question. Okay, boys, send in the next couple. You two sit down over there and split your winnings. If you go ahead and get married, let us know. Put the handcuffs on him, boy, so he can't get away. <laughs> now, remember, if anybody mentions the secret word at any time, the $1,000 bell rings. Do the honors, Jack. Well, Miss Helen Tolan from New York City and Mr. Bill Engel from Chester Hill, Ohio, meet Groucho Marx. Glad to know. <laughs> Welcome to Bet Your Life. Another unmarried couple, eh? Folks, just before we went on the air, we asked if there were any confined bachelors and old maids in the audience. And these two volunteered, only they didn't know what for. Have you two met each other yet, uh, officially? No, sir. You haven't, huh? Well, uh, Miss Dolan, meet Mr. Engel, huh? How do you do, Mr. Engel? Nice to meet you. <laughs> Miss Dolan, would you mind telling us uh, how old you are? I know that's a pretty delicate question. I'm 60. 60, eh? Uh -huh. Well, you don't look it. I thought you were about 45. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how old are you, Mr. Engel? Seventy-nine. Seventy-nine? Well, you're the youngest-looking 79 I've ever seen. <laughs> what is your occupation, Mr. Engel? Life insurance. Lifeguard? Life insurance. Oh. <laughs> I thought you said lifeguard, huh? <laughs> How'd you like to be going down for the third time and have Engel swim out here, huh? <laughs> Life insurance. Well, that's much better even, huh? Miss Dolan, uh, what do you do? If I've I... been a housekeeper and practical nurse. Oh, well, you look very practical. I don't know how good you are. Uh, would you mind telling me if this isn't too uh, nosy, but how is it you never got married? Oh, I've had three proposals. Well, I'm sure you I rejected had... them. You rejected yes, them? Yes, because I was keeping house for my dad for 32 years. I see. But now he passed away. He's five years passed away. Now I'm looking for him to get a soulmate now. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm sure you won't have too much trouble, and somebody has uh, lost out on a very good bet. Is all I can say. Now, uh, have you ever been kissed? How many times? <laughs> How many times? I mean, have you been kissed lately? No, not lately. Not lately, not huh? Lately, Would no. you like to be kissed? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm not doing anything. <laughs> Just remember, Engel, this doesn't include you, huh? <laughs> well, uh, did you ever come close to being married? No, I've had three proposals, but, but I, uh, declined, but I've never come close I to being see. married. I see. Well, you're much smarter than a lot of women who've been married a lot of times. What about you, uh, Mr. Engel? Have you ever been, uh, close to being married? Well, I never proposed to, but by one woman. Waiting <laughs> You were proposed to by a woman? Yeah. What did she say? She asked me if I'd marry her. Yes. And I thought she was joking. <laughs> well, have you ever proposed to any girl? Oh, yes. Two, but it didn't take. 
<laughs> well, I guess you're all through with that nonsense now, eh, Mr. Engel? Or are you still willing to get married, huh? Depends. If the girl's got enough life insurance, huh? <laughs> I see. Well, uh, if the right man came along, you say you'd get married, huh? I would. Now, what is the most important qualification that you'd be looking for in a husband? Uh? Well, I'd look for the romantic type of a man who would be fond of his home. And be romantic at the yeah. same time? Well, that's pretty difficult, huh? <laughs> well, it's scrubbing the floor. It's pretty hard to be romantic. You know? <laughs> And, uh, and you, Mr. Engel, what type are you looking for? Are you looking for a beautiful girl, a rich girl, a, a young girl, an old girl, a one that can fat go, girl? One can go about 50-50 and is good-natured. Well, I, I think that's a very good prescription for a happy I'm marriage. I'm a good cook myself. I don't need that. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, Cupid Marks may get you together after all. Let's see if you can make more money working as a team than our first couple. You start out with $20 between you. Miss Dolan, have you ever done any betting? Yes, I have. W where? On the Irish sweepstakes. Oh, I see. <laughs> On the Irish sweepstakes, huh? Well, uh, did you run in the race, or were you just sitting in the... <laughs> My horse broke his leg. Your horse broke his leg before yes. the race or during the race? During or... the race. Well, did he do it purposely, I mean? No, or... it was accidental. Oh, I see. I thought maybe he was disconsolate because he was losing and just broke his leg in the middle of the race. <laughs> Well, now you get three questions. The first one is on food. For example, if I said, what is raised in wet tropical countries, you'd say umbrella. How much of your 20 bucks? <laughs> How much of your... I read anything that's up here. How much of your 20 bucks do you want to bet that you can answer the question? The right answer pays even money. Now, talk it over. You have five seconds. How much do you want to bet? Ten. Ten? Ten. Do you agree with that? All right, this is it. Which produces the most fish in the whole world? Boston, New Orleans... Or Los Angeles? Los Angeles. Los Angeles is absolutely right. More fish comes through than any other port in the whole world. How much money have they got, Jack? Thirty dollars. Okay. Well, you're pretty lucky so far. Now, your second question is on etiquette. Here's an example. Does a lady always shake hands? And the answer would be no, only when she meets somebody. Now, how much... <laughs> now, how much, of your, uh, how much of your money do you want to bet? It pays two to one, this question. Now, here's the... You better decide between you. Just talk it up now, huh? No secrets here, huh? You've got $30. How much of the 30 do you want to bet? Seven and a half. And seven and a half. You mean you want to bet 15 between you? Yeah. I see. All right. Now, here's the question. Is it proper to use a small piece of bread as a pusher? Yes, it is. Yes, yes. What do you think? Yes. Yes, you're absolutely right. But that doesn't mean you can use a cracker as a shovel. <laughs> Jack, how much money have they got? Russell, well, that gives them $60. Now, here's your last chance to make more money than the other couples. Now, this question is on a general subject. It pays three to one. How much do you want to bet? How much money have they got, Jack? $60. $60. How much I'll do you want that. to bet? Well, I'll go 15. 15. I'll go 15. You want to go 30 between you, huh? Yeah. Now, if you get this question right, we'll send an Admiral Radio phonograph to anybody you want in each of your hometowns. Who would you want to get it to? Uh, Mr. T. O'Connell of 225 East 35th Street, New York City. Everybody wants them sent to New York City. Don't they have any radios? Oh, no, there was one in Milwaukee, wasn't it? And where would you like yours sent, sir? Uh, San Fernando. San Fernando? San Fernando? Just in the valley, any place at all? Eh? <laughs> Just throw it in the valley? Town. Oh, I beg your pardon. He means... Mary G. Poor. Well, if she's poor, she ought to have a radio. Huh? <laughs> I forgot that there was a town, San Fernando. He's much smarter than I am. Now, uh, you're betting uh, $15 between $15. you? $30 to $30. $30. Okay, now this is the last question. What is the average life of a dollar bill? Six months, a year, two years, or five seconds at zeros? <laughs> I'll give you the question again. Six months, a year, or two years? What is the average life of a dollar bill? Now, think it over. Don't make any snap decisions. You're not shooting dice here. <laughs> Hurry up. A year. a year, I'm sorry. A dollar bill wears out in six months. I'm sorry, but better luck next time. And thank you for coming up, eh? And good luck to both of you. Well, Groucho, they, uh, they ended up with $30. That means our first couple is in the league with $95. Well, better luck next time. Go over there. Sit down with those... There are four of you now. Here's a pair of dice. Jack... Uh, give him a paradise so you can shoot craps. 
<laughs> Boys, bring in the next couple. Remember, this couple has to make more than uh, the last couple to get a chance at the $1,000 question. Unless they happen to mention the secret word. Nobody's mentioned it yet, and here's the next couple ready to bet their lives. Well, Groucho, I found these two yesterday down at the Marriage License Bureau. Mr. I'd like to find her at the Marriage License Bureau myself. Huh? Miss Helen Hayden and Mr. Robert Bagnoli. I'm very glad to know. Uh, what is it that drives people to such desperate ends? Well, welcome to Bet Your Life, kids. Mr. Bagnoli, when are you going to be married? On Saturday night. And, uh, and you? On Saturday night. Well, just in time, huh? <laughs> Well, happy marriages are based on knowing all about each other. You may think you know each other, but you don't. How fortunate you are that Dr. Marks is here to psychoanalyze you. Of course, I'll have to have your permission for this test. If you'd rather not, I'll give you time to think it over. Time's up. I'm glad you don't object. Well, tell me, Mr. Bagnoli, how did you two meet each other? Uh, in the USO here in Hollywood. And uh, were you there at the time? Uh, yes, Ms. I was serving <laughs> coffee and donuts. You were serving coffee to him? Yes, well... He... To him and others. I see. Did he have his finger up and did you throw the donuts on there? Or, <laughs> or did you throw the coffee on there? Huh? <laughs> well, that's a very patriotic place for you two to be uh, met up with. Now, uh, Mr. Bagnoli, uh, Miss Hayden, I've, I've got to know you better. What do you dream about at night? I'm sure you well, dream, well, don't you? very difficult. Yes, I do. Well, yes. I suppose I dream about him. You dream of... And, and what do you dream about, Mr. Bagnoli? I can see that gleam in your eye already. <laughs> Oh, come now. Don't you dream about Miss Hayden or Hayden? Oh, sure. That, uh, I don't know, a lot of things. A lot of things, huh? You mean other girls? Uh... No, falling. Oh, you dream of falling, huh? Well, how about sleeping on the floor? And then you, uh... <laughs> See, if you slept on the floor in the cellar, then you couldn't fall. Huh? <laughs> now, Miss Hayden, after you're married, is your husband going to have two or three nights out a week? Well, as many as he'd like. As many as he'd like. Huh? Well, you're sick of him already, huh? <laughs> Uh, Mr. Bagnoli, how many nights would you like off a week, huh? I don't want any off. I wouldn't want any either. I was in your shoes, huh? <laughs> I'd like to try them on after a while, huh? <laughs> now, here's your chance to build a real nest egg. You have $20 now, and if you build it up to more money than the previous couples did, you get a chance at the $1,000 question at the end of the program. What would you do with the 1000 if you won it? What would you do with the 1000 if you won it? Of course, oh. you'd be married, and you'd have the 1000 together, wouldn't you? <laughs> That's right. I mean, if you got a divorce, you'd probably split it up. But you're not planning on getting a divorce before you get married. Definitely. Yeah, <laughs> I would like to buy a house. You'd like to buy a house with with a thousand dollars? Well, it's a good a dog house, you mean, or just a? <laughs> You'll be in a dog house eventually, anyhow. You might just well buy it now, you know. That's a good idea. You're going to buy a dog house for a thousand dollars, huh? <laughs> well, I guess you always were a wolf, huh? And you, uh, Miss Hayden, what would you do with the money? Well, there are all sorts of things you can think of. Bendix, Susan, and... What do you mean? Uh, William Bendix? You mean... The... <laughs> I don't think you could buy him for five... <laughs> William Bendix is not a washing machine. That's the, the Bendix washing machine Oh, you want to buy... I was thinking well, you'd of. still have money left over, you know. That wouldn't take your whole 500. Well... That would only uh, take about half of it. It would be a good nest egg to build up. Yes, you could put the egg right in the washing machine. Well, all right. <laughs> Remember, if you happen to mention the secret word any time you're talking, I'll ask you the $1,000 question immediately. Now, here we go. The first question is on food. It pays even money. How much do you bet you can get it right? You have five seconds to decide. Mr. Bagnoli, show her you're the boss. Be fine when you ask her how much you should bet. $10? Well, um, how about 15 I mean, if we win, then we have more. All right. Well, let's um, make it 12 Okay, $12. 12. Huh? <laughs> All right, now, here's the question. Literally speaking, what does the word hors d'oeuvres mean? Out of season, out of the ordinary, or outside the main dish? I'd say outside, outside of the main dish. Right. Yes, and I'd say she's the main dish, huh? <laughs> well, outside the main dish is absolutely right. How much money they got, Jack? $32. All right, your second question is on etiquette. It pays two to one. How much of your $32 do you want to bet? Twenty. Sixteen. Eighteen. Okay. Eighteen $18 you're going to buy. All right, here's the question. Rash. Should a man, when walking with two women in front of shop windows, walk between the two women on the street side of both of them, or sit on the curb and wait for them? <laughs> walk on the street side. I think between them. Between them? No, now make up your mind. On the street side. On the street side is absolutely right. Oh. He should walk on the street side of both of them. However, on a windy day, he can walk behind them. <laughs> Jack, how much money do they have? They now have $68. All right, now for your final question. Who do you want to get the Admiral Radio phonographs in your hometown if you get it right? Well, Who would I... you like to get yours, Miss Hayden? I have an aunt in Berkeley. I'll you have, happy. huh? Mm-hmm. Has she got an? Have you got an uncle there too? Yes. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah. 
Why do you want to send to the aunt, not to the uncle, I mean? Well, I'll send it to both. Oh, you send it to both. You love both of them, don't yes, you? Uh-huh. <laughs> and who would you like yours sent to, huh? Uh, my father and mother in uh, New Brunswick, New Jersey. New Brunswick, New Jersey, right? Do you want me to send them a, a Brunswick machine or an Admiral machine? You know, there's <laughs> two different clients. All right, now, the question's on a general subject. This pays three to one. How many of your... How many $68. How many of your $68 do you bet you get it right? This is your last chance. I'll give you a hint. You may already have more money than the other couples ended up with. On the other hand, you may not. <laughs> now, how much are you going to bet? Well, yes. I'll make your decision. Maybe, Speak uh, up now. Maybe 35? 30. 30. 30. 30. They're going to get along okay, wonderfully. 30. Okay. <laughs> Everything's riding on this one. It may mean a thousand or nothing. Now, here's the question. Are there more boys or girls born in the United States each year? Go ahead. Hey, decide boys. it between you. No coaching, please. Boys. I have to give him another question. I'm positive. Um, no, she well, is I'm absolutely gonna... right. There are 100,000 more boys and girl babies born each year in the United States. Probably because there are more fathers and mothers. <laughs> Gotta kiss them all on the cheek, huh? How'd they finish, Jack? Well, sir, they won $158, and that means that they are the winners of our $1,000 question contest. <laughs> we got a little time left, so before I give the winning couple their $1,000 question, I want to give our guests who are going to be married something special. Something they can use all their married life, something that costs me nothing. <laughs> Jump down. Yeah. <laughs> now, here's a problem that I hope doesn't come up too soon with you newlyweds, but you might as well listen. It's a letter from Mrs. R.H. in Dallas who writes, I found a romantic letter in my husband's pocket from another woman. Should I forget about it, or should I go and visit the other woman? What do you think? Raise your hands, huh? huh? We'll take this lady right here, huh? Take her for everything she's got. What do you think should be the answer, huh? Well, what is your name, miss? I'm Mrs. Lillian Watkins. Oh, I thought you were a miss. Uh, Miss no, Watkins, No, I've huh? been married 25 years. 25 years? Yes, and how sir. many little Watkins, huh? I haven't any. No Watkins no, at all? Sir. Well, you're still time. 25 years isn't too long, huh? <laughs> and uh, what is your well, there's occupation? Life, there's hope. Yes, there is. And huh? sometimes while there's life, there's time, huh? <laughs> Uh, what is your occupation, miss? Well, I'm a housewife, but I used to be a long-distance telephone operator. Oh, I, I bet you've given me many a wrong number in my time, huh? I suppose I have. Well, no wonder you have no children with all those wrong numbers, huh? <laughs> now, what do you think is the answer to this problem, huh? Well, I've been married 25 years, and if I found a letter in my husband's pocket today, pants, I, would, huh? I would just ignore it because good husbands are hard to find. <laughs> I think you've got something there. I think even bad husbands are hard to find. (laughs) I think that's that's a very logical solution. Thank you very much, huh? Well, the time's up. That's all the advice we can spread around right now. It's time to give our winning couple a $1,000 question. Thanks to you folks in the audience for your advice. I hope everybody made note. Well, come back on the stage up here, Quiz Kid, because the winning couple is waiting for the $1,000 question. Where'd I get on Remember, they're a uh... snake here. <laughs> they are Miss Helen Hayden and Mr. John Bagnoli. That's the couple about to be married. They ran their $20 into $158. Are you nervous, kids, or do you always turn green this time of year? <laughs> well, tell us again, what are you going to do with the $1,000 if you win it? Now you'll have to get married, won't you, huh? <laughs> sure will. That'll be a good start. What are you going to do? What are you going to do with the money if you win it? You still going to buy the Bendix? Well, we have to get back to New York very soon because his school is in New Jersey, so I, I guess part of it will go for that. All right. Well, here's the question. If you answer it, you get $1,000 cash right now. The question is on current events. Everybody reads the newspaper and should keep abreast of the mm-hmm. times. Let's hope you folks do. I'll give you 10 seconds. Ready? Here it is. And please don't anybody in the audience shout it out. We'll only have to give them another question. Okay. Who is the wife of the president of Argentina? Decide the answer between you now. Either Peron. Either Peron. Absolutely right. You have won a thousand dollars. Congratulations, you've just won a thousand dollars, and here it is. I wonder if they've revived the sponsor yet. Anyway, you deserve the money you worked hard for. It. And I know it'll be a big help to you in the future. Congratulations again, and here's wishing you a happy married life. And don't forget to invite me to your golden wedding. Huh? Oh, thank you very much. Next week, another $1,000 might be given away at any moment. And if nobody gets it next week, it'll go up to 2000 the following week. Uh, anything else, Groucho? Only that I want to sincerely thank all of you for helping me out this past half hour. I hope you liked it. I know I've had a lot of fun, and I'm looking forward to seeing you all of you next week when we'll be on the air again to bring... Hey, I said it, the secret word. I said air, and that was it, air. Pay me $1,000, somebody. Oh, Groucho, you can't take that money away. I know it. I was just carried away. Good night, folks. Good morning, folks. Join us next week.
Exciting is fun. You bet your life. John Goodell production. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>